I've chosen 30 plants to grow in these three garden beds. This is going to be the start of my survival garden this season, to grow food crops to feed me. How did I choose these 30 plants? And what are the first steps to get them in the ground? Well, join me today as I share with you how to plant a survival garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and normally I recommend taking some time to figure out what you're going to grow and when you're going to grow it. You take a calendar, put all of the ideas that you have, and gives you a good plan for putting seeds in the ground. But what do you do, or what do I do, when suddenly you have a lot of seeds? Where do you begin? How do you make the selection? And then how do you get out and actually plant the seeds? I have this home garden collection of seeds from Survival Garden Seeds, this homesteader collection, this farmer's seed vault. There are 180 seed packets here. Definitely overwhelming. Let me show you some ideas of how I go about figuring out what to plant and where I'm going to plant them in my garden beds. When I get collections of seeds like this, I start off with a simple thumbs up and thumbs down. What I will probably grow this year and what I probably won't grow. So, for instance, I'll be growing a winter squash and I'll be growing a beet, but I probably won't be growing okra. Peppers and tomatoes require time to start indoors, and I've already done that with a number of plants. So for this year, all those go off to the side. And then it's just a simple matter of going through the collection, figuring out what fits and what doesn't. And this is actually one of the hardest parts of growing a survival garden in particular, is choosing what to grow. When you get these kind of collections, all of the seed packets are going to be good, and you're going to want to grow everything. But as I went through my thumbs up and thumbs down decision, I was thinking about not only what I want to grow, what I'm going to eat, but also my garden beds. How much space can I devote to growing these plants? And so out of those 30 wonderful choices, I ended up with 18. As I mentioned in the beginning, I've actually chosen 30 plants to go into these three beds. The 18 I just selected are for this bed alone. And this gets into a whole new arena. How many plants can you grow in a single bed? And as I was making that decision, I had the size of this bed in mind, four feet wide by eight feet long, and how many plants I could put in here. A very common method in determining how many plants to put into a bed is square foot gardening, where we divide the bed into grids, and each of those squares is one feet square. Well, you might be able to put different plants in each of those one foot squares. I like to do rows where I'll follow a similar pattern where the rows typically are six inches to a foot apart. I might plant in a block or I might have a whole bunch of rows. And at the end of this video, I'll link to my video on square foot gardening and I'll link to a video on how you can sow seeds in rows and blocks as well. As I get to that point, I still have to think about these individual seed packages. How big are the plants going to be at maturity? Are they going to take up a lot of space or just a little bit of space? And so now, being aware of how much space I'm going to use and how much space the plants might need, I'll divide these into two basic categories. The plants that take a lot of room and the plants that take just a little bit of room. Melons take more room, spinach, carrot, arugula, no. Zucchini, room, radish, lettuce, no. Chard actually takes more room than you might expect. Kale, 
eggplant, cucumbers, turnips, cilantro, dill, parsley, beets, and squash. So now I can start thinking about these seed packages and how I'm going and where I'm going to grow them within the individual beds. I can go through the seed packets pretty quickly because I've grown all of these before and from experience I know how much space they're going to require in a bed. All you need to do is just read the seed packet. Do a little bit of research. For instance, this eggplant tells me that I should be planting them two to three feet apart. The zucchini is 18 to 24 inches apart. And the Swiss chard is 12 to 18 inches apart. Compared to something like these beets, which can be grown four inches apart. Or these turnips, which are four to six inches apart. Go through the seed packets and see how much space the plants need, and you'll be able to divide them just as quickly. Figuring out exactly where you're going to put the seeds in your survival garden bed doesn't need to be difficult. Most of the time, I'll just take a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'll hand draw where I plan to sow these seeds. And I'll admit, over time with experience, there are times that I skip that step. I have an idea, but I'll just go out with the seed packets and I'll lay them in the beds where I'm planning to sow them. But I live in a pretty windy area and there are a lot of days I try to do it that way and the seed packets just blow away. So instead, it's better to have a plan, to know ahead of time where the seeds are going to go so that you feel comfortable with it and so that the packages don't blow away. And a good tip is to use your dining room table. Imagine that this is the garden bed you're going to be putting these seeds in. And before you ever get out to the garden, start laying out where the seeds are going to grow. And so imagining that this table is my four foot by eight foot bed. It's a little bit smaller, but it gives me pretty good perspective. So for this eggplant that should be two to three feet apart, I can put it at one end of the bed. And assuming a four foot wide bed, that means I should easily get at least two plants on that side of the bed. I need space between the eggplant and the next plant. So let's go ahead and put in something like this zucchini. Now the zucchini doesn't need to be as far apart. I like to do about 15 to 18 inches for the zucchini. So for this, I should be able to get at least three plants in the width of the bed. I'll put those right there, anticipating when I get outside that there's going to be about two feet between the eggplant and the zucchini seeds. They'll end up growing into each other a little bit, but I'm okay with that. And then I'll just work my way down and choose something like beets. Now the beets can be four inches apart, so they're going to be growing much closer to the other plants. And that's also true for the turnips. So if I grow turnips right next to the beets, they only need to be about six inches apart from each other. And if I go with something like radishes, I can stay pretty close to the ones that I've already laid out. Then let's go ahead and start spreading out a little bit. This lettuce needs to be about eight to 10 inches apart. So I'll give space between the lettuce and the radish. And this spinach, is about three to six inches apart. So it can be pretty close to the lettuce. And so now this bed as laid out with this basic idea, I can grow seven different food crops. With some of the other plants like the parsley and the dill and the cilantro, I don't need to have nice rows of plants like I'm planting with these. For these, I can grow around the edges of the bed or maybe even intersperse with some of these plants. So I'll take some of these seeds and just lay them on the outside knowing that I'm going to be sowing them at the same time 
but they're going to be surrounding these internal plants. And in an earlier video about survival garden seeds, I raised the idea of succession planting. And so as I chose these seeds, that was in my mind. The eggplant and the zucchini are going to take a while to grow and give me fruit. That's why I put them together at that end of the bed. The beets and the turnips will grow a little bit faster, but they're still going to take some time. They're in the middle of the bed. And the radish and the lettuce and the spinach are going to grow pretty quickly. So I should be able to have a harvest of these plants in a month or two. When I harvest all these radishes and this lettuce and this spinach, I have a few options. I can go ahead and sow the same seed again, so I have multiple crops, or go ahead and take these out and then put in a new choice of plants, maybe something like carrot and kale to carry me into a fall garden. For now, I'm gonna stop with these plants this is what I'm going to put outside in my bed. And so with my plants selected, with the herbs that are going to be interspersed, and with an idea to succession planting, these are the seeds I'm going to put into one of my beds. Of the 18, I'm using 13 of these seed packages. Well, I've got a couple other beds to plant, so what am I gonna do with those? I still have a whole bunch of seeds. Let's go ahead and go through the same process, and this time add some new plants to the mix. For my second bed, I'll be doing things a little bit differently. For this bed, I'll be growing vertically. I'll be using a trellis and training vines up onto the trellis. So on that end of the bed, I have my winter squash and pole beans. And they'll actually be growing pretty close together as they climb up onto the trellis. I'll have a gap of about two feet where I'll have some round zucchini growing. Gap again so that the plants have ample space to grow. And then I'll grow cucumbers. Again, I'll train the cucumbers vertically onto the trellis as I will with another winter squash, the spaghetti squash, the bush beans, the black-eyed peas, all relatively close together, but growing straight up. And then at the end, I'll have Swiss chard to anchor the bed. I'll also have beets in this bed too. And like the previous bed where I ring the bed with herbs, that's what I'll do with the beets. The trellis is high in the middle. And these plants will be high in the middle, but around the edges where sun could still reach and where the plants aren't so high, now I can put in some of these lower root crops like the beets and some of those other herbs as well. And so just like I did on my dining room table, I've laid out the seed packets in the bed. And this is when I can visualize just how many seeds I'm going to put in. I know I'm only gonna have a couple eggplants and just a few zucchini, but I've got a pretty big space here for beets. I like to do the row method. So I can lay out the rows that are four inches apart for the beets, and then put a whole bunch of beets in this section and do the same thing with the turnips and the radish and the lettuce and the spinach and just fill all of this. Just because I'm using rows doesn't mean I'm doing a single row of beets and a single row of turnips. I'll probably have three rows of beets, two rows of turnips, maybe three rows of radish, four rows of lettuce, maybe three rows of spinach. It's at this point when I actually get out into my garden bed that I ultimately decide how many of these seeds I'm going to sow. I'll do the same thing with this second bed, with my second selection of seeds. I already have my cattle panel trellis in place. It's sturdy enough to handle all of those beans and squashes and cucumbers that are going to be growing up to it. And I like that I can get in here and work. I don't need to put the seeds in and then put the trellis in, which I could do, but I just like to have it in place to start with. So I'll do the same thing. I'll lay out these seed packets just like on the table to figure out where they're going to grow. 
and at some point I'll drop the twine to help direct the plants onto the trellis. This raises an interesting point. When you determine the orientation of your plants, think about the sun. My sun just came out from behind a cloud. That's south. That's where the most direct sun will be during the growing season. So I can choose where I put the plants. Usually you put the tallest plants on the side away from the sun so that they don't shade the plants that are growing behind it. I'm doing that. I'm growing tall plants in the front and the middle. And remember these beet seeds? Well, beets don't like a lot of heat, so I can actually grow the beets at the northern end. They'll be shaded by a lot of these plants, and that shade can help these plants, these beets, grow a little bit better during the summer heat. I'm only growing seven different plants in this third bed, and this is a lower cattle panel hoop trellis. On the north side, radishes. They'll grow fast and they like the coolness of the shade. I'll be growing a couple different types of beans, but they won't grow as long. The vines aren't as long as the beans in that other bed. There'll be some cucumbers, a bush cucumber this time. Again, there won't be vines as long as the ones growing in that bed. And then about half of this bed will be devoted to melon plants. And I'll be growing a couple different types of melons. Some of the melons will be spreading across the ground. I'll train some of them up to the trellis and actually spill over the side. So only seven different plants, but a pretty good variety of plants all within the same bed. I started with 180 seed packets and not much of a plan, and now I have 30 seed packets with a very specific plan of where all of the plants are going to be growing in these three beds. You saw that it's a relatively easy process if you just take it step by step, and you can do it pretty quickly. For any survival garden, you have to think in terms of the food crops, the nutrition, the harvest, how much you're actually going to get. I'll be covering a lot more about that in future videos. You also have to think in terms of what will grow in your climate. Some of those seed packages that I passed on just don't match my short growing season. From experience, I know that they're not going to do well. And that's why you need to get started on a survival garden if you want to grow food for your family, because there are a lot of lessons to be learned over a long period of time. It's not going to be a great success in the first year. Expect that you're going to have to learn a lot, experiment a lot, put a lot of seeds in the ground to find out what works best for you and your beds in your garden, in your climate, and then you'll suddenly realize it might be a few years, but you'll be successful growing the food crops for you and your family. And to see the next step, actually putting these seeds in the ground, click on one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.